Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome back to Five Minutes of History from the pages of the Sutton Siding. This is episode five, and we're up to um, February of 1986. Um, the first article I'd like to read to you today is an editorial um, written about Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, a day of sweethearts and lovers, husbands and wives, girlfriends and boyfriends, cards with lace and hearts, gifts of chocolate and flowers, a day to celebrate the greatest of all human emotions, love. We tend to forget, however, in the midst of buying or doing something special for our loved ones, just what is this emotion we call love. There tends to be lots of mush on Valentine's Day, and don't get me wrong, I am all for mush. But love is something greater than that. It is the most powerful force for good that man has within him. Today in the world, it seems there's lots of negative emotions, hate, despair, jealousy, anger, and greed. We hear this every day on the news and see it happening all around us, even right here in our community. It's hard with this kind of negative bombardment to feel that there's anything we can do to change the world we live in. But there is, we can love. We can love God above and the earth below, our families, friends, and neighbors, the environment that surrounds us and sustains us, all the people with whom we share this planet. As we send out this positive force into the world, we counteract negative emotions. We help make this world, and more specifically, our community, a better place to live. And most importantly, we make each and every one of us a better person for having loved. So celebrate today. Valentine's Day, not only as an occasion to express our romantic feelings towards those we care about, but celebrate the wonder of the greatest gift man has been given, the gift of love. Some of you may remember Bob and Betty Tucker, who lived in Sutton for many years. Um, my memories of Bob Tucker are working in his garden across the highway from his house. But this is an article about um, Bob. Area resident retires from Borough Board. Sutton resident Bob Tucker has retired from the Borough Planning Commission after spending 21 years voluntarily serving on this commission. He has served on the commission since its, its, its inception back in the 1960s. Originally, Bob served on the school district platting board in the early days of Palmer. When the borough was formed, the platting board was transferred to the borough and combined with a planning board. Bob was asked to retain his position on the transfer. In those days, the dual board had one part-time employee working for them. The planning commission was split from the platting board in the mid-70s and now has seven board members and a staff housed at the Matsu Borough building. The planning commission is the more controversial of the two boards. While the platting board deals primarily with breaking up of land into smaller parcels, the planning commission has to develop zoning and land use plans and deal with industrial development in the borough. The members who serve on this commission are appointed by the borough mayor and are confirmed by the assembly. They serve a three-year term at the end of which they may or may not be reappointed. Although Bob may no longer be serving on the planning commission, he's still very active in borough affairs. He's on the Platting Board, the Trails Board, and the Historical Preservation Commission. Originally, he worked as an engineer at the Jonesville Mine and has lived in our area for many, many years. He has written numerous articles for various publications, such as MEA's Rural Light, detailing life both as it has been and as it is now in our area. He's an active, observant member of our community, volunteering quietly his time and energy to make our area a better place in which to live. Moving on through the year, um, uh, from April of 1986, there's an article about a wine tasting at the community hall. Uh, the headline reads, Wine Tasters Toast Sutton, Despite Community Hall Problems. A small but vocal crowd braved the elements and attended the Alpine Civic Club's 
fourth annual wine and cheese tasting party and fashion show held last Saturday at the community hall. Although the show got off to a rocky start with the toilets backing up and the wine arriving late, it didn't seem to dampen the spirits of the Hardy Valley crowd. The Alpine Union 76 volunteered its restrooms for the course of the evening. Still, it was a long walk. The first part of the evening was hosted by Anchorage Cold Storage with Mike Carrera and Steve Hickson presenting a comparison wine tasting. After a short break, the fashions supplied by Fun and Fancy, fashions in Palmer and described by Miss Alaska, Christine Taylor, were ably displayed on our attractive models. Thanks to everyone who worked on and supported this year's program. Everyone seemed to enjoy it. Um, uh, Moving back a little bit, I wanted to read this article about um, the Alaska Zoo and our kindergartners and first graders at Sutton Elementary who raised a total of uh, $18.51, which they sent to the zoo. In January, reported on the fundraising efforts done by the first and second grade students at our school. They made Christmas ornaments and sold them at the bazaar last December. This last week, Miss Bill's class received a thank you letter from the Alaska Zoo. The letter reads as follows. Dear class, we appreciate your donation to the zoo for the animals. Annabelle has been very sick. She had a virus that made her joints swell and be very sore. She's better now and eating again, so we will buy her some bananas. Thank you very much, all of you and we hope to see you at the zoo. Sincerely, Sammy Sewell. P.S. Annabelle. Annabelle was the elephant at the Alaska Zoo for those of you who had not had the pleasure of visiting the zoo and meeting her firsthand. And one last article about um, from Chickaloon by Rita Fouth uh, from April 11th to Rita writes, um, spring's out there somewhere. I know it is. It seems I'll just have to be patient and wait until it asserts itself. Meanwhile, meanwhile, back in Chickaloon, there's an important decision to be made, the location or relocation of the site of the community center. The site that was originally chosen is too small to satisfy the DEC requirements for both septic and well, and does not provide adequate, adequate space for parking. There's other borough land available to us in the immediate area. Recently, the CPIA was asked to appear before the Parks and Recreation Board in defense of our grant request for funds to complete the community center. The members of the board expressed concern about the small size of the present site. This board will be making their decisions on the grants in May. It is important that CPIA makes a decision on the site as soon as possible and that this information be available to the Parks and Rec Board before they make their decision on the grant request. Recently, a letter was sent by CPIA President Joe Frisbee to all Chickaloon residents and landowners stating the problem and possible solutions. She also urged everyone to come to the next meeting that will be held at King Mountain Lodge on April 21st. This important issue will be the main topic on the agenda. It is, it is important that as many Chickaloon residents as possible attend. Now is the time to speak up. Fortunately or unfortunately, we cannot make decisions about the weather, how high the water in the Chickaloon River will rise this spring, or some of the other exciting things that can happen here in Chickaloon. But we can and we must make this decision. So mark the date on your calendar and attend the meeting. And that's it for now. Um, see you soon again. Bye.